morning. Welcome to St. Anthony's Catholic Church in Wolfport. Today is Friday morning, March 26, 2021, the fifth week in Lent. Our special intention today is for Sharon Fitzgerald, the repose of her soul. Before Mass begins, let us place ourselves in the presence of our Lord. Our opening song is I Am the Bread of Life, number 325. words of wisdom for these times let us ask the lord for his pardon and mercy lord jesus you have sent the hill to contrite lord have mercy lord have mercy christ jesus you call us to come to you christ have mercy christ, christ have, have mercy. mercy lord jesus you are our refuge and our protector lord have mercy lord, lord have mercy may almighty god have mercy on us forgive us our sins and bring us to everlasting life Amen. Let us pray. Pardon the offenses of your people, we pray, O Lord, and in your goodness set us free from the bonds of the sin we have committed in our weakness. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns in you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Amen. A reading from the book of the prophet Jeremiah. I hear the whisperings of many, terror on every side. Denounce, let us denounce him. All those who are my friends are on the watch for any misstep of mine. Perhaps he will be trapped, then we can prevail and take our vengeance on him. But the Lord is with me like a mighty champion. My persecutors will stumble. They will not triumph. In their failure, they will be put to utter shame, to lasting, unforgettable confusion. O Lord of hosts, you who test the just, who probe the mind and heart, let me witness the vengeance you take on them, for to you I have entrusted my cause. Sing to the Lord, praise the Lord, for he has rescued the life of the poor from the power of the wicked. The word of the Lord. Amen. Thanks be to God. In my distress, I called upon the Lord and he heard my voice. In my, In my distress, distress, I called upon the Lord and, and he heard my voice. I love you, O Lord, my strength. O Lord, my rock, my fortress, my deliverer. In my distress, I call upon the Lord, and 
and he heard my voice. My God, my rock of refuge, my shield, the horn of my salvation, my stronghold. Praised be the Lord, I exclaim, and I am safe from my enemies. In, In my distress, I call upon the Lord, Lord and he heard my voice. The breakers of death surged round me. The destroying floods overwhelmed me. The cords of the netherworld enmeshed me. The snares of death overtook me. In my distress, I call upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he cried out and cried out to my God. From his temple, he heard my voice, and my cry to him reached his ears. In my distress, I called upon the Lord, and he heard my voice. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. You have the words of everlasting life. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ, King of endless glory. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Glory, glory to you, Lord. The Jews pick up rocks to stone Jesus. Jesus answered them, I have shown you many good works from my Father. For which of these are you trying to stone me? The Jews answered him, We are not stoning you for our good work, but for blasphemy. You are you, a man, are making yourself God. Jesus answered them, It is is it not written in your law that you are gods? If it calls them God to whom the word of God came, and scripture cannot be set aside, can you say that the one whom the Father has consecrated and sent into the world blasphemes because I said, I am the Son of God. If I do not perform my Father's works, do not believe me. But if I perform them, even if you do not believe me, believe the works that you, so that you may realize and understand that the Father is in me and I am in the Father. Then they tried again to arrest him, but he escaped from their power. He went back across the Jordan to the place where John first baptized, and there he remained. Many came to him and said, John's performed no sign, but everything John said about this man was true. And many there began to believe in him, the gospel of the Lord. Praise the Lord Jesus Christ. Have you ever had had a conversation with somebody that it seems to get to nowhere because the person is not really listening to you? No matter how much you try to explain, they ask questions, but you don't think they're looking for answers. Every day. Every day. (laughs) And how does that feel, Phil? (laughs) Uh, I try to take it in stride. And uh, just hold back and just telling him uh, something negative. So I just repeat myself. Okay, I I doubt that probably helps very much. But I mean, how many how many of us have ever had the conversation? Like Phil says, for him it seems like every day. And some of you guys, I wonder in your marriages, in your relationship, sometimes it it probably feels that way. The part of the person is not listening, no matter what you say. You're not getting, you're just spinning your wheels. And I wonder if this is what Jesus must have felt like. I mean, I sometimes I'm kind of curious about why did Jesus even bother explaining to them? Because, you know, because at the end of today's conversation, did the people who wanted to stone him, you think they had a change of heart? No. No. No, no I doubt they were the one who's praising him. They still have their stones. They're probably putting stones away now. But we'll save it for next time until the next confrontation. 
I mean, isn't that, that's what it feels like all the time, no matter what Jesus said, it's not good enough. And fundamentally, the question is, comes down to, who are you, Jesus? Jesus, how does he explain that question? He's the son of God. He's the shepherd sent for the sheep. No word seems to get nowhere. Why is that? They didn't want to hear it. Their hearts already hardened. And it's kind of ironic because we hear the same thing in the first reading. Jeremiah was being attacked. The prophets of the God has been attacked over and over again. He felt the people were turning against him. Moses had the same experience. The list goes on and on and on. It seemed like that's pretty much the story of anyone who tries to bring the good news and ultimately it happened to Jesus up to the point of finally having him crucified and nailed to the cross. And with that in mind, I wonder, do we still have that same question in our mind, in our hearts? Because do we ask ourselves, who is Jesus to us? I'm not asking for a textbook answer that you can say, well, this is what I heard. Is that satisfactory to Jesus? No. no. Then what does Jesus want? I want you to follow him. After you follow him by your action. That speaks louder than word, what, who you believe Jesus to be. And oftentimes I think, you know, we who are professing ourselves Christian as Catholics, I wonder how faithful are we to to this testament of our faith, that we say we believe in Jesus, but yet our hearts are always heavy with fear, with worries, and lack of trust in God. Despite we say, yes, I pray all the time. Well, is it helping? Is it helping? Yeah, it is, you, I don't know, you know, I mean, prayer is a good thing, but I wonder, do, do, do those prayers come from the heart or it just, words I say because I'm taught to say those words. That somehow maybe if I say those words, I believe it. I don't know if I say it enough. Maybe I will. So where does that trust and that faith in Jesus come come from? In your heart. In your mind. You, you just are blessed by our Lord to, to really know he's there and to want to go toward him and to live for him. So you sound like it's magical from it your heart. It's not magical, but you have to make the decision to believe. Okay, yes, you have to make a decision to believe. And you, and you also have a relationship with Jesus in your life. That he's not a, a figure out there, but he has to be a real alive in your heart. I mean, think of in the things that, the things that happens in the course of a marriage, that sometimes People some have lost their faith in each other. I mean, I don't know how many are, how many times have you have seen in your life married couples that don't believe each other. No matter what the other person says, guess what? The other person contradicted and says even the person doesn't say something. What does the spouse say? <laughs> you're thinking it. Don't you're not even saying it, but I know you're thinking it. You know something along that line. You, I think we all all, all experience it. And we're kind of wondering yourself, boy, this sounds like a I'm glad I'm not living in that household. I mean, have you guys all experienced that? And seen it? Yeah, and it's a very, it's a tragedy. So that makes me wonder, like, what went wrong? I mean, I can't imagine that they, the couple was always that way. Well, there was the respect and the love for each other. Yeah, the respect and love for each other. And over the course of time, they've lost the faith in each other. And once the doubt starts having in their heart, Guess what happens? They just grow apart. The, yes, they grow apart. The doubts grow one doubt upon another. And eventually, the wall is set between them. The built so high that they can't see beyond that. And so they all their life is just to doubt each other. No matter what the other person says, it can't be believed. And it won't be believed. And I don't know about you, but that doesn't sound like a very good way to live life. I mean, it sounds like, well, I hate to say it, but it sounds like almost like purgatory. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like a very sad situation. And those times, I don't know about you, but I feel like, 
Oh, boy, I'm glad I'm living with my with Ali, Ali and Bailey. They don't argue. Those are my dogs, by the way. But I mean, you know, and it doesn't, it shouldn't be that way, should it? Should it be that way? It shouldn't be that way. And I believe life is too short for us somehow to, to get into that rut. That we are so entrenched in our life, that we become so small-minded. That we spend all our life and effort just in a constant state of war. And I don't know about you, but life seems to be too short for war. I mean, to, for one battle after the other. Because at the end of the day, who wins? Nobody. 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 You know, because sometimes I just kind of, just kind of, kind of wonder about what's going on in the human heart. You know, recently a man quit his job and he was trying for months, trying to get his last paycheck. And, and one day he showed, he finally came home and he found a big wheelbarrow in front of his driveway filled with pennies, over 90,000 pennies. That's 500 pounds of pennies in his driveway. And it, from in it is a note, here's your paycheck of $915 of pennies. And you can, I don't know, and I thought to myself, boy, they really, I mean, the guy says, I quit this job because the guy was so, he was so difficult to work with, it was so stressful for me. And, and now, he, now the guy actually proved it, why he's so, I mean, I don't know exactly what their relationship, but just by his action, what does it show about his boss? He's very, he's very difficult to work with. I mean, that he's very, well, he wants to get back to this guy. Yeah, if you want to get paid, I will pay you. Very vindictive. Yes, it's very vindictive. Vindictive. And the penny's not even clean. I mean, they're filled with oil and oh, this crud and it, it's in there. But, you know, for him to do that, what would it entail for the for the boss? A lot of effort. A lot of effort, right? <laughs> a lot of effort to make this guy, you know, to make life difficult for this guy. Because I can't, ima can't imagine gathering, yeah. you know, over 500 pounds of penny and putting it there and carrying it there. And then, you know, that's a lot of work versus just pay up the guy, even if you don't like him, get it over with and then call it good, you know, move on in your life. And I wonder, you know, in our life, do, are we that vindictive? You know, are we sometimes so small that we lose the bigger sight of the life that God has given us? The precious life, the precious time that he gives us. And I believe life is too short to be small-minded and, you know, and to be that way. Because Jesus said, ultimately, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And for this life to be effective within us, for this peace to really reign in our heart, to, to possess that peace, what needs to happen? We need to, believe. we need to believe and live out the message that you've given us. And so today, my brothers and sisters, I just invite you in your own heart, when you and I have lost our way, when we have allowed bitterness and hatred to overwhelm us, to turn to the Lord and ask for his pardon and mercy, because in asking the Lord pardon mercy, that's the time when grace, when the grace of God, his goodness is coming into our heart and removing the heart of stone that we have inside of us with the heart of Jesus, with the living, breathing heart. Amen. Amen. Trusting in God's goodness and love, let us turn to now all our needs and all the needs of the world. For Pope Francis, for Alexander, our bishop, and all our priests, bishops, and deacons, may God's grace be upon them to help them to lead and guide their people to everlasting life. We pray to the Lord. Lord let us also pray for each and every one of us. May we always have the ability, the grace, to be able to see Christ in one another. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us also pray for all the prayers, the concerns, the worries that lie deep within our hearts. We pray to the Lord. Lord Let us also pray for all our brothers and sisters who have gone before us, trusting and believing God's love and mercy. We pray to the Lord. Lord Loving and compassionate Father, accept the prayers of your family gathered here. Help each and every one of us, O oh Lord, to turn to you, that in doing so, may we experience your goodness and love. We ask it to Christ our Lord. Amen. Our song of the preparation of gifts is Flow, River, Flow, number 639. 
similar way when supper was ended. He took the chalice and once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is a chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church, spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity. Together with Francis, our Pope, and Alexander, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection, and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the Blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with Blessed Joseph, her spouse, and with the Blessed Apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit and co-heir to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him, with him, and in him. O oh God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Amen. At the Savior's command and formed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance of your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Let us offer each other sad peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Behold the Lamb of God, behold who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should have my mind. But only say the words in my soul of you. Jesus bore our sins in his own body on the cross, so that as we sin, we might live for righteousness. 
by his wounds we have been healed. After spiritual communion, Jesus, thank you for coming into our hearts. We welcome you and unite ourselves to you. Strengthen us in your love as we await the day we are reunited at the Eucharistic table. Amen. Please come and your eye has not seen. Number 462. Just make sure to uh, visit our website and Facebook. We'll have all that for, that uh, service and mass recorded for you. Also, remember to pick up your word among us for Easter and for the Catholics and Catholic Sentinel. It's available in front of the church and also Mike's Asian Market. And remember, next week there will be no Bible study during the Holy Week coming up. No Bible study next week on Wednesday. However, there will be the search on Thursday at 2 p.m. and also on Friday, 6 p.m., Station of the Cross. And remember, Station of the Cross is also available online anytime you wish to join us for Station of the Cross. Do that. Also, 
Um, remember mass intention, please email or snail mail your request to the office. And of course, confession are available by appointment. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May the Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Mass is ended. Go in peace and love and serve the Lord. Amen. Saint Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan. And all the evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. The closing song is Roll Away the Stone, number 177. Mm. My dear brothers and sisters in Christ, praise to be Jesus Christ. Our local Catholic community has done everything it can to stay well connected during these times of this global pandemic that we've been living through. Right now, the vast majority of our parishes are able to offer the Holy Mass, the Eucharist and the sacraments to all of our faithful. And most of our parishes are also able to live stream Mass for those who are unable to join us for Mass in the church. This year has been really tough in many ways, especially with the pandemic, but there's been a lot of strength in our community. Um, I remember when Masses were first being canceled, um, we got text messages from our friends that had links to different masses we could attend online. Something that was really neat was seeing how our parish priest was uh, very intentional and very loving with the community. He would tell us multiple times, hey, uh, don't hesitate to reach out to me. Uh, I'm here for you guys. And that was just very beautiful to see. We are new parents and I mean, we just had our first baby boy. It, it comes with a lot of responsibilities, but it's something that uh, I'm honored to take on. And it's important for us to have that uh, access to knowledge and wisdom that the church has to offer so we can continue to teach him and um, show him to the community where he can grow in, in his faith. I'm so proud of all of our priests, 
our parish staffs and volunteers who have worked so hard and in innovative ways to keep our church going uh, during these difficult days. My name is Sharon Grigar, and I am the pastoral associate at Ascension Parish. When I first heard about the pandemic on the news, I thought, oh, it's just going to be for a few weeks. It's not going to be a big deal. But that obviously wasn't the case. So we postponed many things to keep everybody safe. And so it was difficult, but we kept trying to think about what we could do instead of focusing on what we could not do. One of my goals as a staff person is to help so that everyone is connected to someone and that nobody feels like they're isolated or forgotten. And the small group is the perfect way to do that, whether it's in the form of kind of a phone tree, a one-on-one -on -one group or a Zoom group. Why would we not want to be together, even if it's not what we're used to? Part of our churches is community and building community. And so we're still doing that, but it, it does feel different. It has been a challenge, not meeting in person on a regular basis, but meeting more at a limited basis. The scripture that comes to mind is where two or three are gathered in my name, so I am with them always. And, and so when we do gather, whether it's on Zoom or in person, when we gather together, Christ is with us and just reminding us that we are the body of Christ. A lot of good has actually come through this pandemic. I think it makes us stronger because we eliminate all the stuff that doesn't really matter and it helps us to focus on what's really important. I'm so proud of the parishes who have participated in our food box distribution program. We have managed to distribute over 500,000 boxes of food to people during these difficult and challenging times for them as well. Five months ago, people who didn't think they would be below the poverty line are now finding themselves there. And being able to meet that essential need of food and good quality food. I've worked in a lot of food centers um, throughout Portland. The quality of food in this program is just unbelievable. Um, to get fresh produce and fresh dairy and fresh meat to people um, who need it and are really benefiting from it is, is amazing. I was actually a participant. I actually drove up one particular time and uh, I overheard the, the manager uh, state that as soon as they emptied the truck that they would, uh, they would start giving out the groceries. And so I was in line and I said, well, do you need help? She said, yeah, I went to help. <laughs> and ever since then, I've been, uh, I've been helping. You know, today there was a woman whose husband was out of a job, she was out of a job, she has four kids. And she said, you know, if I didn't have this food program and she started crying and she said, I, I don't know how I would, I would feed my children. And so um, it's, it, it's every single week we get answers like that. We're helping a couple thousand people every single week. I've never been involved in a ministry that, that affects so many people in a positive way. I want you to know that I have some wonderful, I think, and exciting plans for how we're going to renew, re-energize, reinvigorate the church here in Western Oregon as we come out of this pandemic. What I'm asking for this year is your support once again through the Archbishop's Catholic Appeal. I'm asking as you are able, and I know these are difficult times, but as you are able, to support us in the work that we have ahead of us as we build with Jesus and His grace the kingdom of God here in Western Oregon. Thank you and God bless you.